Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Well, it looks like we're pretty much less than 24 hours away from an announcement for the upcoming RTX 3000 series from NVIDIA. And I'm sure, you know, everyone is excited as they can get. I've made a whole bunch of videos this past month and the last couple of months surrounding leaks, rumors, and other tidbits of information that has come out regarding the upcoming series. And... Well, looks like we just have one more video to go, and then tomorrow we'll have all the official information uh, given to us by NVIDIA themselves. There's actually going to be a stream that they're going to host on their website. Um, as you guys know, with everything that's going on in the world right now with an ongoing global health crisis, it's not like they can uh, organize an in-person event. So online streaming is the way to go these days. Um... So the reason I wanted to make this video is because it looks like a lot of AIBs have actually jumped the gun a bit and have started leaking or teasing a bit of information about their custom models for the RTX 3000 series. Um, and, you know, this information's out there. Uh, one of the uh, cards that was leaked was the ASUS model, the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090. And uh, this one was posted by Video Cards. And this one's actually interesting because... This render, or there was a render of this exact same card that was posted a couple months ago. And uh, that was one of the reasons uh, as to why I made a video explaining why, you know, the RTX 30 series are a lot closer than you guys think uh, they are. A lot of people were speculating that they were going to come out, you know, late September or early October. But I mean, we started getting all these teases and leaks uh, mid-August and then... They said they were going to do an announcement on the 1st of September. Uh, so this render, or this card over here, is exactly the same as the render we saw from a couple months ago. And it pretty much confirmed their design that this is the one they're going to be going with. That older render, I believe, uh, the only difference was that on the badge in the bottom left-hand corner, there was a RTX 3080 Ti uh, brand there, whereas now it says Game On. Um, and... Looks like, you know, even a couple months ago, Asus didn't even know what the final branding of these cards was going to be. So the internal document and image that was leaked assumed they were going to go with RTX 3080 Ti, which we know is not the case anymore. There's only going to be an RTX 3090, a 3080, and a 3070. So at least now we know that. Um, Zotac actually had a couple of their cards uh, leaked as well on their website. Um, and they actually had quite a few more SKUs leaked. And uh, they have a whole bunch of SKUs regarding the RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090. And you know how it works with AIBs, right? They'll make a couple of different variants for each GPU. So, you know, an RTX 3090 will have four or five different GPUs. You'll have a budget cooler, which will usually be like a blower or a very low-end cooler. Then you'll have something in the middle ground there. And then you guys will see a top-end premium model that will usually have a very, very bulky cooler on it, a very thick heatsink, lots of RGB, triple fan, uh, you name it, everything on there. Um, and I think the reason why they just do this is because they can kind of saturate the market in different price points. Um, and, you know, I'm not one to complain. The more options you can give a person, the better. Now, apart from Zotac and Asus, Gainward, and Gainward is another AIB of NVIDIA's. These guys are actually a lot more popular in places like China and Europe. You hardly ever see these guys' as cards here in uh, North America. I've never seen a Gainward card be sold here in any of the Canadian hardware stores. But uh, Gainward actually released two documents, uh, and in their documents, they full-on show all the official specs of the RTX 3080 and 3090. There were two other models of the same kind of looking card, it's just that those two models just had slightly lower clock speeds. But apart from the other specs, they were pretty much the same. So I want to quickly just go over two of these uh, cards here. And it's interesting because they pretty much showcase all the same official specs that NVIDIA is probably going to be talking about tomorrow too. Um, so this one here is the Gainward GeForce RTX 3080 Phoenix Golden Sample. I'm not sure if Golden Sample is going to be the final name of this card, but, you know, let's go over some of these specifications here. So at the top, they've got process technology, and what's interesting here is that it's a 7 nanometer. When everyone was under the assumption that N NVIDIA wasn't going to go with a TSMC 7 nanometer process node for their GeForce lineup, 
and that the 7 nanometer node from TSMC would be used for their cards such as the G100, GA100 chips, which are the uh, cards which are used in data centers and their accelerator uh, GPUs. Um, so it's interesting. Now, you know, they don't specify if it's 7 nanometers from TSMC or if it's uh, Samsung 7 nanometer node, which is a lot more closer than their 8 nanometer node would be. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a surprise here. And, you know, when everyone was under the assumption that it's going to be 8 nanometers from Samsung because we kept on hearing about these high power draw figures, this one here has a 320 watt uh, TGP, um, you know, it, it made a lot of sense. So seeing 7 nanometers here was interesting. And I guess in tomorrow's announcement, they'll definitely um, showcase some more information. But the RTX 3080 here is listed with 4,352 CUDA cores. 10 gigabytes of memory. Yeah, unfortunately, there's going to be no 12 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, or 20 gigabyte model, at least that I that I know of, that's going to be released at launch. So 10 gigabytes it is. Really, really hope they would have went with more, as I feel felt like, you know, 10 gigabytes just isn't enough for, like, a high-end card like this, especially if they want it to last for a few years. But, you know, that's how it is with these guys. Planned obsolescence. Um, so, you know, they've got a 320-bit bus. GDDR6X memory, a boost clock of 1740 megahertz, and a memory clock of 9500 megahertz, which, you know, when you double that, it's not effectively 19 gigabits per second memory, um, and a memory bandwidth of 760 gigabytes per second. Now, key features here, NVIDIA Ampere architecture, we'll definitely know more information tomorrow. Uh, like I said, 19 gigabits per second GDDR6X memory, second gen ray tracing cores, and third gen tensor cores. So this is key here because these are essentially the cores that's cores that are going to allow for much better ray tracing performance and you know deep learning uh, super sampling performance as well. DLSS 2.0, or they might even announce a DLSS 2.1 or 3.0 tomorrow. We'll we'll have to wait and see about that. PCI Express Gen 4. Um, this was pretty much a given. AMD was already using PCI Express Gen 4 last year with the 5700 and 5700 XT. So, you know, it only made sense for NVIDIA to obviously hop on board. And with newer motherboards coming out, adapting this uh, updated uh, updated interface, then, you know, Gen, Gen 4 is definitely the way to go for more bandwidth. And we'll, we'll definitely see how it goes when people do benchmarking with these cards if Gen 4, PCI Express Gen 4 the throughput was really needed for these cards. You might maybe see performance gains out of an RTX 3090 for it. We'll have to wait and see just because of how much power that card, that one's packing. Uh, NVIDIA DLSS, GeForce Experience, G-Sync, you know the deal, all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, here we've got some more information as we scroll down at the bottom. And you guys can see the I.O. layout. So we've got three display ports, and these are three DisplayPort 1.4a slot uh, ports. And, you know, I was hoping they would have went with DisplayPort 2.0, um, as it allows for much, much higher bandwidth and uh, high resolution capability. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to why they would decide to go with DisplayPort 1.4a when DisplayPort 2.0 was... I, I think from what the uh, VESA Association said, they said it would be ready by late 2020. So I guess they just didn't get it working in time. Now, HDMI 2.1, this is huge. As someone who has an LG C9 OLED TV that has an HDMI 2.1 port, so I can take advantage of 4K at 120Hz with G-Sync, this is crucial, and this is one of the whole reasons why I'm I'm looking forward to upgrading to one of these. 3000 series GPUs. And then, of course, they've got some dimensions listed here, and uh, they also tell you what comes in the box with the accessories and stuff. And then, moving on to the right hand side here, we have their minimum system requirements. So, obviously, you'll need a PCX, a motherboard with PCI Express X16, uh, two 8 pin PCI Express supplementary, supplementary power connectors. So, I guess this one isn't going to be adapting that new 12-pin uh, power connector that NVIDIA has uh, been working on. I think that one's only going to be included on the uh, Founders Edition cards. Um, probably like the uh, RTX 3090, because that one consumes a lot more power. Um, minimum 750-watt power supply requirement, though. So that's quite a bit higher than what's usually recommended for higher-end cards. Obviously, these are a little bit exaggerated, because they try to take into account for lower-quality power supplies. Um, but yeah, 750 watts, that's, that's quite high. And, uh, 
you know, it definitely concerns a lot of people if their power supplies will be up to snuff for the requirement for these RTX 3000 series GPUs. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, as long as you don't have a super power hungry GPU, you're not running, you know, hundreds of fans in your system, you don't have, you don't have like 10, 20 hard drives as well, you should be fine with a sick, even a quality 650 watt power supply. And this one only states two 8-pin PCI Express supplementary, supplementary power connectors, so you should be able to slot this into most systems and be fine. Alright, and next up we've got the RTX 3090, the Phoenix Golden Sample again. Keep using the word Golden Sample and it makes, I guess this, uh, this pretty much signifies that it's like the top bin for them. It's going to be the top tier SKU. So, I mean, I'm obviously going to go over the same key features again. That's pretty much all the same. Uh, IO pretty much looks to be about the same as well. And they actually state the same power supply requirements as well. 750 watts, which, you know, seeing that is uh, makes me happy because in both of my systems, I'm currently just using 750 watt power supplies. So that should make it an easy upgrade. And then the other system, I mean, if you've got a modern Ryzen CPU, those things are extremely efficient. and you shouldn't really have much of an issue with that. So apart from that, everything else is the same. So we have uh, the specifications here, which do change up. So process technology, as we went over, 7 nanometers is what they're going with for this GPU as well. 5,248 CUDA cores, 24 gigabytes of uh, VRAM here, and that's a 384-bit bus mem uh, memory bit bus. Uh, and it has a boost clock of 1725 megahertz and a memory clock of 9750 megahertz. Uh, TD TGP of uh, 350 watts. So that's uh, obviously the boost clocks. Now it's pretty much confirmed. Nothing spectacular here. These are the same kind of kinds of figures we'd see from previous generation 20 20 series graphics cards and 10 series graphics cards. So don't expect huge advancements or improvements or leaps over in regards to the frequencies. I doubt you're going to be seeing people. Uh, run these cards at like 23 or 2400 megahertz uh, on the core which was definitely something people a lot of people had speculated about uh, when we started hearing about the RTX 30 series GPUs um, so most of the advancements definitely are not coming from frequency it's going to be from um, the improvements that the Ampere architecture brings us you know better ray tracing performance better uh, advanced third gen tensor cores so apart from all the other information, that's pretty much it. Um, so now all that's left is for them to finally make the announcement tomorrow. It's going to be really one interesting day. I'm, I'm glad that the uh, time they picked works out a lot better for me. It's going to be in the midday for where I am. So that makes it easy. I'm going to have to get up super early in the morning or stay up late. So I do feel for you guys who are across the globe and, you know, have to wait until 2, 3 a.m. in the morning and got to catch the stream. That's going to be awful. Um... So yeah, tomorrow they're definitely AMD. What 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 can we really expect from Nvidia tomorrow? They're gonna be obviously talking about the Ampere architecture. They're gonna showcase the SKUs. Um, they're gonna be talking about what's improved. Obviously, when it comes to in-house benchmarks, take it with a grain of salt. They're obviously gonna be showing their products in the best light. It's not this not just Nvidia who does this. AMD does it. Intel does it. Everyone does it. Uh, so you're gonna wait for you're gonna want to wait for third party independent reviews. Obviously, I'm gonna be trying to get the cards as early as I can, but I don't get review samples sent to me. I go out and buy my own cards, so it's about as early as I can get the cards from uh, a supplier. Um, so the biggest thing that remains is price. What the prices are gonna be? Obviously, we've heard quite a lot of outrageous rumors. From the RTX 3090 costing anywhere from $1,400 to $2,000. And this is US, by the way. So for us Canadians, for people in Australia and Europe, wherever, it's going to be a lot more than that. Um, which definitely does concern me. So I'm hoping, you know, there wasn't that much truth to those rumors. And we do see some prices that are a lot more feasible. Um, so pretty much that was all the information that I want to cover in this video. And as the announcement's made tomorrow, I'll, I'll definitely make some kind of video doing an overview of the announcement, taking out the most interesting tidbits and, you know, just giving my general thoughts on them and what I think about the RTX 30 series GPUs. So I hope you guys found this video to be helpful, entertaining, informative. Leave your comments, thoughts down below. 
leave a like if you like it, leave a dislike if you didn't like it. And uh, if, you, if you're interested in more content like this, if you're interested in more hardware reviews and generally just more analysis and uh, my discussions on PC hardware, then hey, subscribe and uh, check out the other links in the video description to support the channel. Take care, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.